Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and we have Angela here and today we're going to be talking about the pressures of marrying Kananaya. Do the intro! Angela is a young woman. I would say you're almost like the next generation of like young adults in the Kananaya community. Um, a student and um, going back to school uh, after all of this like pandemic quarantine stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to have you on and kind of talk about your experience as a 21 year old. I, we have quite a bit of an age gap. And so I think it's interesting to kind of talk about your perspective, how it's been like for you growing up in the Kanana community. And then, you know, we can talk about our stories and whatnot. But um, how would you define the Kanana community? So um, I've done this like, I feel like a million and three times uh, growing up in a predominantly like non people of color, like um, neighborhood. So like, I almost would describe the Kanaka community as like my second life. It was like my weekend life that was like totally filled with like parties and cultural events and like family and church. And like, that was like every weekend we drive the 30 minutes to go to the Kanaka church. I guess I would always say that it was like this extremely close knit community that was like back way back when super historical from like three, four, five AD that basically kind of um, intertwines like my culture and my religion. Mm -hmm. And it's like also a really important thing is like we practice endogamy, which is like, you know, kind of keeping within the culture and uh, marrying within to keep it alive and thriving. And like, those were like kind of the main things that I would like hit, like, you know, endogamy, family, faith. What was your experience growing up in the Kanani community? Um, so I feel like uh, I grew up in a very, it was like s somewhat split, you know, being a first generation person growing up here in America where like there is so much like on like assimilating to the culture here, but also like having such a rigid, like strict somewhat culture um, of like back home and like what my parents grew up with. Yeah. So like, like I said, kind of before, it really, really intertwined like my religion and my uh, culture. Um, and I used to always see it kind of as like one thing. I like didn't really, it was hard for me to separate that. And like almost until like I came to college is where like I was able to actually make that like distinct, like culture is one thing and like religion is another. Mm -hmm. But like, I like grew up with it you know i went to church we my entire family like went to the canal church in chicago i taught ccd there i went to ccd there um and it's still like the church i go to when i go home from on breaks yeah. when i grew up there was like dance classes with all these other girls and boys like cultural shows and it's like what i looked forward to every single weekend because i was like these are my people like these are the people who i can relate to and like they were like my second family almost a lot of the time. I think that's interesting because we, we talked about how we both kind of grew up in suburbs further away from the church, right? And I mean, I grew up in Naperville, which is even further from where, than where you guys live. But because of that, I didn't attend events and I didn't go to church because it was so far away. And my parents, um, you know, I think also a part of it is because my parents are a lot older than your parents. And so they're just kind of like, they probably have lived a good amount of their life not being super involved in the community. So they're just like, that's our norm. Yeah. And so um, I think that's interesting where like our um, exposure to the Kanani community is a lot different. And the other thing I was thinking about is like, I actually had to ask my parents to start bringing us to things like, or bringing me specifically to things. Like when I was in junior high, I was like, I want to go to KCJL things and whatnot. And it was a part of that. Like feeling connected to the community and feeling like okay I can relate to these people because I was growing up in Naperville and people didn't really look like me um the, the Indian kids at my school were more of like traditional Indian right like they came yeah. here a lot later maybe they were born in India and so I always find that interesting um just you know my family I think is a lot different from a lot of like typical Kanani families and so 
um, I, just, I like hearing about like how people are, are connected to the community and like what it means to them. And it feels like, you know, you're really connected okay. to the community and it means a lot to you. It does, it does. Um, I definitely think like it's shaped a lot of who I am today. Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially like, just like first generational like struggles and stuff. Like we all went through them collectively together. Like whether it be like our parents wouldn't let us wear short shorts or like my mom made me change my tank top because she thought it was too revealing or things like that, you know, like that was stuff I could relate to with them. Because like when I would try and talk about that at school, like my school friends would be like, what? Like your parents care about that? And that's funny because like when I was going to KCJL, I um, was wearing shorts and I was wearing makeup. I remember they had like these rules about like, how long your shorts could be and whatnot. And I was like, what? Like if my parents don't even care. My dad doesn't even care. Like why do y'all care? So that was interesting, like being young and um, feeling a little bit like different. Uh, than like the typical Kananaya kids. Did your parents pressure you to like date Kananaya? Obviously you're not at like the age to get married, but obviously like that's the, that's the first step. My parents would like to disagree. They 100% are like, okay, you're 21 now, time for you to find someone to settle down with and okay. all this. Um, I definitely know that my parents have a preference for me to marry Kana. Um, You know, like I've dated Kana in the past and like, they definitely were very much more accepting, I think, than like, even like other people who have kids like my age, like their parents and stuff. Like, um, my parents were really chill with me, like dating kind of, I mean, don't get me wrong. We had our hardships and like, there was a lot of fights in the beginning, but I think like, as like time went on with this relationship that I was in, it was like a long-term relationship and stuff. They saw that it was a little bit more stable, a little bit more permanent. And like, they definitely were more open to it because my person was also Kana. When it came to it ending, they were kind of like, more like, why? Like, why can't you work it out? And blah, blah, blah. almost treating it like it was a marriage. And I was like, I'm only like 18 at this point. And I was like, it's not, I'm not tied down to this person, but I could, kind of see it because you know my mom got married at such a young age she got married at 20 mm -hmm. and me breaking up with my significant other of four three four years at 18 they were like it's too close like you should just like stick through it almost yeah. you know so I I did see it where I could see why they had that concern and whatever but like that's where it's like being first generation like in America like people aren't getting married at 20 years old anymore. You know, people are waiting like 10 years later now, like, you know, late twenties. And so, I mean, to be fair, like my parents are like, we acknowledge that you are an adult and that you can make your own decisions. Um, but every decision that you make has its own consequences, like not even with marriage, but like, you know, just in general life, but they do tend to like remind me that like, marriage if you marry out does have its hardships and consequences and do you want to go through that a part of that is like our parents didn't date right and so how they're seeing is this dating is like this courtship that is in preparation for marriage yes. and so even though you were so young and it was like multiple years they're thinking like this is it right and yeah that's interesting like i never had any kind of pressure i mean i dated kananaya obviously my husband is kananaya um but I think, I don't know, I think maybe my parents just never brought it up, <laughs> but like I think the preference was always just like Indian, Catholic, Malayali. I also think it's just a maturity thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my mom at 20 was much more mature. Like the generation was a lot more mature than how we are. Like, I think in today's day and age, like we are always talking about youth and like living your life to the fullest and like acting like you're still young, like you're never too old to do anything, you know? And I think that mindset wasn't really there. They were in a very different state of mind of like survival. And I need, I'm coming to this country and I need to like make a life for myself. And so it's just like, we are like so privileged that we can even think the way that we think. Have anybody in your family, have they married out of the Kanana community? Yeah, so I guess uh, my family, I feel like is different in that sense where uh, we haven't had that many pe people marry out. I mean, people have married out, but if they do, it's always predominantly like Indian origin. Mm -hmm. So um, it hasn't been like, I don't know, ex quote unquote 
extreme, like, you know, a different race or a different gender or anything like that. Everyone has kind of stayed within like those ranges that my parents have, you know, like the ranges of like Kana, then like, like Malu Christian, and then like, you know, like things like that. Like there's like circles and like, in my family, people haven't deviated out of those circles too much. And I do think like that does shape the way people will react and handle situ like that, just like lack of exposure almost, you know, like it's like you're, you see this thing and you're scared of it because you don't know what it's like and like how it's going to affect your family. So like you just run away. Yeah. Or like kind of are hostile to the idea of it because you don't want it at all. Friends who have people who have married out, like they're still just as included to their family. And like, you know, yeah, they had to go through some hardships and probably some fights and difficult conversations with uncles and aunties and whoever else that seems to care. Um, but like, they are still there, like their cousins still support them or they have other support systems. Like they are still living. It's not like they died and fell off the face of the earth. I had an aunt who like married out and she was like the oldest. So like mm -hmm. from the very start, all of like my dad's side, like they have known what that was kind of like. And I mean, even still like being 21, I don't know everything about my family. I don't know all of the hardships. They tried to shield that from us. And like, they are still trying to open up that part of their lives to me still, even and it's getting there. Like my parents will open up about like certain family challenges and whatever else, but like, it's still like, they see me as a kid almost and don't want to talk about that with me. Cause they were like, well, if you don't have to know, you don't have to know. It's not a need to know kind of thing. I think a big part about it is, um, the struggle with like processing. Right. I think a lot of times, I think it's a society thing, but also culturally, even like stronger is challenging like pushing ourselves to process and not just focus on like the end result and it being like healed and fixed and everything's great um I think that's a little bit of a part of that is like we don't want to be like open about the process but um you know not like we're good yay like <laughs> that's kind of like the focus I have family friends and whatever like I have friends and I am exposed to people who are married out and I don't think that like they deserve to be shunned or you know like anything like that um like they are as as like kind of my parents taught me like they are their own decision like uh, adults and allowed to make their own decisions mm -hmm. um and like I just I guess my mentality is like people who marry out are going to be going through so many hardships why add to that you know like why be hostile like why like turn them away or like judge them for marrying out because like I don't know, in this culture, it's not anything new. We see it all the time. We see interracial marriages. We see marriages between different religions. We see marriages like with the same sex, you know? It's not like, at least my generation should not, I don't think be very like anti, 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 like, oh my God, no, like you need to practice endogamy to each their own, you know? Like I can, I see both sides of the argument. I see why, practicing and maintaining the culture is so important but also like that was back when like there was very little outside influence like in India you know like in India everyone's Indian like you can always kind of find like someone who is cannot and like don't get me wrong our communities are pretty big here I mean small but like big to us you know we have these giant conventions and like we have all these youth conventions and like KCS, KCJL, KC Kids Club like I guess there's like this whole like complex with like trying to please your parents versus like trying to do what you love and it's just like Asian culture to like give back to your parents like they sacrifice so much for you so like you should sacrifice for them but also then there's that American culture where it's like you put yourself first like you are marrying this person you're staying with them for the rest of your life yeah. you know so it's just like that divide and like trying to find that balance where it's like I want to sacrifice for my parents, but at the same time, like, this is my life now. 
I mean, I've, I feel like, you know, your generation, like people your age are very adamant about, I don't think all of them, but I, I've been feeling are very adamant about marrying Kanana. And I think that's interesting. Obviously it's your decision, right? If you want to marry Kanana or if you don't, like if you meet someone that, that idea of like, there's so much more influence, we have more exposure, like we're interacting with non Kananayas, like obviously there's an opportunity that you may make a connection with someone or whatever the case is. And I think, yes, it is your decision. And um, technically based on the rules, like you're no longer a part of the community um, and that is something you're choosing, right? But I think the part of it that frustrates me is the um, how people are treated. That part of it is like hard for me and frustrating. Um, and, you know, personally, I feel like when you're born something, like you're, how is it no longer a part of you just because of, the person that you marry, someone were to marry Kananaya and they have like Kananaya traditions at their wedding. Like, do you have right. thoughts on that? Yeah. So, oh my God, I feel like this is like one of the most touchy subjects when it comes to like uncles and aunties right now. Like everyone has like, I feel like it is very like taboo, but, but I also kind of see like both sides of the um, argument where like yeah, like, this is something that we have done for centuries now at this point. And it's always something that, like, we as a culture have done. And, like, it's, like, almost, like, I can see where it's, like, if everyone ends up doing it, like, what makes it so special, you know? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's kind of also that balance where, like, would you rather still have it maintained by some people, even if it's because it's not like random people are doing it. Most of the time, it's like one of the people in these marriages is cannot, right? And so like, would you rather have people still doing the culture and like adapting and being flexible to the times that we are in now yeah. rather than it going extinct completely? I, I definitely am aligned in that mentality, but I also understand. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, I understand that like my upbringing was different. I understand that my mentality is different. So I can I can have a respectful conversation with someone about this and I understand where they're coming from, but I may not necessarily be aligned with that, yeah. with that mindset. But yeah, um, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for us to continue this conversation. I'm doing a series with multiple um, people to just kind of get different perspectives and it's a like hopefully spark conversation. And yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all watching. Thank you so much. Um, thank you also for your support um, with the show, with my content, with all the things I'm doing. And yeah, thanks, bye.